Good morning, our space fam. That was a tribute to Robin Williams. Anyway, what's going on, everybody? Today we've got a group of stories where they all need a little bit of advice or want some people to weigh in. Let's see what we can help them out with. Let's start things off with, my fiance cheated on me with a good friend of mine. Today, I accidentally sent screenshots talking about the situation to a group chat with lots of friends of ours. I posted this on r slash today I screwed up already, but someone advised me to visit this subreddit. It started with my fiance's ex. He was controlling and very manipulative and turned out to be a physical and mental abuser. He denied her social contacts, etc. And when she met me, she dated me just to come out of this bad relationship. I came out of a bad relationship too, where basically my other girlfriend dumped me because some former girlfriend of mine died of leukemia. Me and my fiance kind of felt bad for each other when we met and got into a relationship and agreed to make it polyamorous because she was held back in former relationships and I wanted to give her the opportunity of experimenting. I was also into the idea and when she met a distant friend of mine that I used to be very close with some years ago, she started having sex with him. I had the opportunity of having sex with multiple women back then, but didn't want to take the chance. And when she started having sex with him, it felt bad. I talked to her about it, and she agreed to put it on hold while I figure out if I like this kind of relationship or not, but she talked me into doing it with him for another time after that. She went to him and ended up having sex with him twice after we spoke. At this point, I was getting depressed and started having panic attacks. One at this guy's house. We had a difficult time anyways, because she has a major depressive episode and in my opinion, seems to be bipolar. She even sought counseling for that, and I felt sorry for her. Then, some other things started to happen in her life where she wasn't sure what she wanted and broke up with me for a month, but came back to me, apologizing and saying she made up her mind. She offered to marry me and presented me with a ring. I said yes, and gifted her one back a couple weeks later. These were such wholesome weeks, even a couple months. Then, after my sister screwing up big time by drunkenly slurring at her, we had a fight, and she would talk to this guy about some issues we had. And she said they just talked that time. She told him we were engaged and showed him the ring. She gifted him something she didn't need anymore, and I even helped bring the gift, furniture. She always talked about how hard it is to resist him, because he is a temptation to her, and he would always not give a damn even though he's seen what I went through. After some time, she wanted to talk about the fight with my sister, and she ended up crashing at his place, and they had sex. Bear in mind that we agreed on not having a polyamorous relationship anymore after she gave me the ring. It was mutually agreed upon. We even talked about it and dropped plans for a threesome we had before. When she drove to him, I had a bad feeling and asked her to watch out and not fall for some dumb shenanigans he could do. She was dumbfounded with the idea that I even brought up that she would fall for him. We are engaged. She called me that night. I was on a trip to and from work and wasn't in close proximity to home. She cried and told me she was sorry, for she had betrayed me and she did cheat. She told me she had touched him and I didn't ask further questions because she was so upset and sorry. When I came back, I asked her what had happened, specifically, because it bugged me and she told me hesitantly that she had just touched him after they cuddled him. No more. After a week more, she had confessed that she went down on him. After three months, I questioned her because she felt so guilty and it didn't make sense to me. She confessed. They had sex but she felt awful and cried while having sex. Then he stopped and they just slept. They didn't wear a condom or anything. The day she confessed was very emotional and she felt bad before, so I forgave her. I didn't talk about the incident for about two or three months now with anybody. And when a friend of mine said that he is behaving weird lately, I just couldn't hold it back anymore and told her on multiple occasions where he behaved in a very crappy way. He ditched us three times playing D&D &D and took up all our weekend just to not arrive and tell us nothing. She wouldn't believe me. I'd asked for proof, and I went into a group chat, taking screenshots of the conversation, talking about how he cheated on me with my fiancé. I accidentally sent the screenshots and comments into the group chat instead of to my friend. The whole group of five people got to see that, including my fiancé, who was in the group chat. Now, all my friends know. They write to me, but I can't bring myself to answer. My fiancé called me. She was very upset and told me to delete them and explain myself. Then she hung up. I didn't hear from her until now. She told me it didn't matter with whom I was talking about this stuff and basically told me I'd betray her, even if I wanted to send it to someone else. I haven't heard from her in seven hours. She's online all the time and I'm really desperate and emotionally very hurt. I tend to prefer talking to strangers, 
Sorry for this long post. I really like to get advice. Oh, and I tried contacting the friend she cheated on me with, and he just plays dumb and plays the I can't remember game. And he even told me that if he did something bad, he's sorry, but he can't remember. I called BS several times, and he does not respond anymore after I said that. It's not about forgiveness, but about truth. I'm not even mad. I want the truth. Even if my fiancé told me the truth, I'm still insecure and want to know the truth from him. All that happened. To be sure. What can I do? I don't know anymore. This is my personal opinion, but that just sounds like an odd situation. Let's move on to the next one. I cheated years ago, and now I think she's cheating. Can either of us be trusted? Short answer, no. But let's read on anyway. We're both in our mid-30s, together for 16 years, married most of it. Our relationship started when she cheated on her ex and eventually, a few weeks, left him for me. While we dated, I had a suspicion that she was cheating on me because of some IMs I found with a co-worker. I brought it up, we fought and screamed and somehow she convinced me that she was not cheating, that I misunderstood what I read and that I was wrong for snooping. I feel so stupid typing this as I know I'm not the one that was in the wrong that time. Years go by, I had attempted infidelity but never physically cheated. I had talked or attempted to talk to other women with the intent of cheating, but nothing ever came of it. Then smartphones happened. Fast forward to years of dead bedroom, depression on both our ends, and other problems, and I end up having an affair. I tried to convince myself or justify that I had cheated because of the dead bedroom, because of the lack of affection, and what my shrink and I finally settled on was that I have awful self-esteem issues that stem from the way my mother was when I was a child, and that I was dying for someone to appreciate me or show me any kind of real attention. My wife and I went to couples therapy outside of our individual therapy sessions. I opened up a lot, admitted a lot, really tried to repair the marriage. She spent the next couple of years learning how to trust me again, and I thought things were going well. So well that we decided to have a child, and he is flipping amazing if I do say so myself. He's a year old now, born just before COVID, and I think my wife is having an affair. A few months ago, my wife started acting differently, taking off all the boxes you'd expect from an affair. A new hobby. You said I needed a new hobby. She isolated herself in a dear part of the house. I can't smoke in the house, and you quit. She's highly irritable with me pretty much all the time. I'm just stressed. Her shower schedule changed. I don't have to go into the office anymore, so why does it matter when I shower? Different perfume. It came in my monthly box. And then the things I haven't approached her about. Downloaded a new chat app to her phone. Closes or minimizes the app on her phone every time I walk out to the garage where she's smoking. Or is just sitting there with her phone in her hands on the home screen. Goes to see friends for lunch that she doesn't normally. Makes jokes about coming home super late. Goes to lunch and says, I'll see you around 10 tonight. Phone is constantly on her when she used to misplace it in the house and daily. All of these things could be explained as innocent and her answers could be genuine. But I see her doing all the stuff I did when I had an affair. Unexplained anger towards me. Phone always with her. Closing apps when I walk in. Pretty much everything I listed above. I'll be honest. I've looked in her phone and I know who she's talking to an old co-worker that she hasn't hid that she has kept in contact with. It's not a surprise to hear his name occasionally in conversation. The act she is using notifies you if messages have been read with timestamps and deletes old messages to protect privacy. The fact that she isn't just using text messages like she is with every single other one of her friends is the cherry on top that has me so convinced she is cheating. Why would she need to use a different communication method with only one person? especially one that auto-deletes old conversations if she isn't doing anything wrong. This was a long-winded rant, and I probably deserve a, Sir, this is an Arby's comment, but I need advice on what to do about this. I have never been able to successfully argue with this woman because she is honestly so much smarter than I am, and she's a master of flipping the script so that she's the victim, no matter what. It can be infuriating at times. Do I wait until I have solid evidence of cheating? Do I confront her now? What do I do when she immediately shuts this down as me being crazy? I really do want to save my marriage, but I'm afraid the only way is to live with her secrecy, and that's not what I want. No matter what the end result is, whatever the answer is, I know it will be my fault. I don't even know where to begin with that one, so leave some comments down below so we can see what you guys think. Meanwhile, moving on. Went pain shopping two weeks after being gaslit, and I found something. I'm going to throw up. Two weeks ago, I found suspicious texts with a nickname under my boyfriend's phone. 
His behavior for a little over a month was bizarre, and I just felt ill. He also took away my girlfriend contact name, but said it was an update. I asked him if everything was okay, and he said, yeah, but we continued to be out all day, 24-7, while I got left home with our daughter. Anytime I was home, we would make sure he was not there. Clearly avoidance. Also, stop having sex. So finally, after a month of brick walling and not communicating to me, I decided to check his messages. Also, things gradually led up to this. The peak of it all was mid-November. There was nothing technically incriminating, but my boyfriend was being overzealous to go fix this girl's car. I posted an advice subs seeking help, and I was told I was overreacting. I believed it and tried to let it go, but the anxiety was awful. Something was just not right. I wasn't eating or sleeping for two days, so I checked his phone again, where I found a hidden photo dating back a month. It was him and a girl at a bar. There were hints of extramarital affair, but nothing concrete. I found info on her and such, and we argued for a while, confirmed it was her, the number, Snapchat and things were to the girl in the photo. Now me and my boyfriend usually give ourselves once a night, a month, to spend time out, but given the pandemic, I have not been, and he supposedly was only going to people's houses. Still bad, and it was something we would argue about, but this is a separate issue. Well, he successfully gaslit me. I came to Reddit and was told a mix of things, but I believed the ones that said it was just a miscommunication. He told me the only time he had been to her house was that one time, and that there were people there. I never thought to ask where she lived. He said she had a boyfriend, which turned out to be not true. I found that out a week later, and said he thought they were. Said this guy also lived there. Not true. But he thought he did. Truth trickling, I have just now realized. I also just realized how he did not know her address when there was no address exchange in snapper messaging. One of the strange behaviors was he would not respond when out at all. I would check the addresses, and they all seemingly were at friends' houses or in that area. The past two weeks have been great. I checked his messages, but I don't know why I bother since he is tech-savvy and would delete or hide things he did not want me to see. A big point in his argument for proof he was not cheating was that he would delete her entirely and not leave things. I let him persuade me. Today, I went pain shopping. Why on earth would I do this to myself, but I did it, and I found something. I found out her address. The address happens to be an address he went to three weekends in a row at least during the stray's behavior. The address is a street down from his other friend. So I just wrote it off at the time that he was at that friend's house, so no need to worry. And nope, he was at this house, her house specifically. I feel so gross. Who knows how many times he went there? It's just a few minutes down the road from our house too, so he could easily get there and back in just 30 to 40 minutes. I somehow found solace that she lives a little further. That's what I initially thought for some reason, but now if I were to check his locations about the day, which I have been, all he needs is a busy time at me for work to do a quickie. He could have possibly been doing this regularly, and I feel so disgusting. He would frequent a shop, and her house is on the road he takes to get there, so he could even stop there quick and then go back to normal saying he pulled over or saying he stopped at another friend's house, the person who lives a street over, and claim the location was off, which it sometimes is. I consider confronting her, but she knows about me now for sure, at least, and it would not surprise me if she would lie for him. I don't think she knew about me before because I am not in any social media photos, and he hid his friends list as well as my name from the in a relationship part. His friends apparently didn't know he had a girlfriend even though we had been together for 5 years and have a 2 year old. I did not know this since I was never around his friends. After seeing her address, hearing his friends say they didn't know he had a girlfriend and given his behavior and lack of sex during that month, I know he was cheating. I just don't have hardcore proof he can't refute against and I feel disgusting. I don't know if I should break up with him or continue until I either find hardcore evidence or until he cheats on me again, probably with her at that, or if I should let this go since he's been doing good for the past two weeks. I was going crazy, but I somewhat calmed down. I was even contemplating purchasing a phone backup software to see what messages he would have deleted, but I stopped myself because I thought it was crazy and what if there was nothing? I feel like crap and I feel so lost. I just need support and I need to hear other people's stories, please. Newsflash, either way, this doesn't sound like a healthy relationship, especially with a kid to grow up in it. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's see what everybody else thinks down below in the comments. In the meantime, we'll move on to the last story. He confessed to being in love with her. I'm seven months pregnant with our planned and much wanted baby. He left me originally about three months ago, saying he has suddenly lost feelings for me and didn't know why. 
I felt there was someone else, because his reasons made no sense. He insisted there wasn't. He only did this once, he started a new job, a few weeks before. So I suspected one of the younger girls he worked with, but had no proof. He kept popping back up every so often to check on me and the baby, and would say he missed me and still loved me, but that it felt weird and was missing feelings, etc. He came to visit me once, and I could tell his affection was gone. I always asked him to please tell me the truth so I could put my head to rest and move on. Always insisted no. I kept an eye on this girl's social media account and his, and my suspicions grew. Eventually, he told me he had developed feelings for someone else, but hadn't acted on them. He said he had confessed them to her, but she told him she didn't want to get in between him and me and that we were having a baby together. She is 24. I was heartbroken and he promised he wouldn't see her anymore, even though he worked with her. He didn't keep to this, and I found out she had been to his flat and he had been hanging out. I got upset. He understood why I was upset. Told me he wanted to try and make things better with us and be a family. Said he just wanted me to stop hurting and be happy. He said maybe his feelings will come back with time for me. I feel awful when he says that. We had a long chat, and he finally admitted that he lost his feelings because he fell in love with her. He admitted that if we weren't together, that she would want to be with him. Even though she hasn't told him that. He just knows. I can see he is only staying with me because I'm so heartbroken and a baby is on the way. He feels guilty. I feel weak and mentally unstable from all this upset and stress. It keeps going through my mind. He's 38, she's 24. I can't compete with a 24-year-old, I'm 37. But for him to fall for her so fast, a few weeks after starting at his new job, it hurts knowing he sees her at work every day. He says he can't quit yet because COVID and he won't find a new job that easily. All excuses in my mind. He barely calls or texts me. When he does, he's nice, but quiet, and there's no connection from him. It's all obligation, and so I hurt when I hear from him and hurt when I don't. He says he wants to try and fix us, but there's no fight in him. I told him I want to fall out of love with him, but don't know how. He said the best way is to cut all contact and social media, like he was giving me advice. I asked if that's what I should do. He said if I think that will help me feel better. I told him that perhaps it should be him cutting all contact with her so he can fall out of love with her and he can concentrate on his family. He sighed irritably and just said, yeah, whatever, let's discuss it tomorrow. I can see I need to let him go. His heart is not with me or his unborn baby. I felt he should be fighting for us, but he doesn't. He's like someone else. I know I need to be strong and cut him off. I bet he arrives in two months. I wanted the man I love more than anything to be by my side while I welcomed our baby into the world. But I can't face this guy being there as he's like a stranger. If I cut him off now, I can't have him there adding to my stress. Please, can you guys help encourage me that I'm doing the right thing? Please, I'm so heartbroken. Edit. Thanks, everyone. I didn't sleep a wink last night and saw all these lovely supportive messages on my phone from you lovely lot this morning. Part of me wonders if I should message this girl, letting her know she is the reason he abandoned me and his unborn baby, because he told me she thought we were already broken up and doesn't know she is the reason. I keep looking for a reason not to, but he's already destroyed our little family, so why should he start afresh on lies with her? That's a really unfortunate situation, but she's probably, no, she's definitely better off without that guy.